The French government was concentrating its major effort in the north, considering Napoleon's ragtag army of Italy a mere sideshow. The later was indeed in a poor state on Napoleon's arrival at Nice in late March 1796. He found his sub-commanders, General André Messina, Charles Père Francis Aguero, Jean Mathieu Philbert Surrier, AEF Le Harp, and H.O.M. Stengel, not to mention his chief of staff, Brigadier General Louis Alexandre Berthier, demoralized. Their spirits were hardly lifted on seeing this stunted, grim looking 26 year old foreigner who was their junior, both in age and seniority of rank, just another political general most of them had described him. This darling of the directory, whose new wife, that Beauharnais woman, was the talk of Paris. In fact, Napoleon only had four friends with him. His aide-de-camp, Colonel Joachim Murat, Major Junot, the 22-year-old Captain Mormont, and his own 17-year-old brother Louis. Little did Bonaparte or any of these men realize that over the next few years, six of them were destined to become legendary military figures as the marshals of an empire that was to seize, shake, and throttle Europe and the world. What's up guys? Welcome back. Bonjour, I guess. Uh, Ragnarok here with part two of my Napoleon Let's Play in uh, Northern Italy here. So let's uh, just get right back into things. I, I should actually apologize for the uh, terrible pronunciations of words and uh, names and things like that. Um, yeah, I don't know. I Even though I am Canadian, I, I don't speak really much French at all. No, a few phrases and I can pick up things here and there, but I am definitely not uh, fluent in French. Uh, not to mention, too, Quebecois French is very different than Parisian French. So, anyway, what can you do? Alright, so we want to take this fortress and hopefully we can pin this army. I'm not sure where he's going to go, but we'll use these two armies to eliminate this force and then probably we'll head for Turin or potentially... Potentially we'll swing around, hit this, and then go for turn. I'm not sure. We'll do it. it depends on how the situation looks. But let's get in here and get some more some more work done. All right, so I'm just recording this right after um, having recorded the first episode. I actually should have started up <laughs> upload for the first episode, but uh, anyway, uh, I guess I'll do that after I finish recording this bad boy. And then I'm probably gonna take a break in between in between episodes and just uh, before recording next week next week's episodes, just to get an idea of what you guys think of the campaign and if there's any suggestions or feedback or anything like that just uh, give you an opportunity to voice your concerns before I will get full-blown uh, recording for this thing probably the next day off from work I think is Thursday so with any luck get a lot of this recorded on Thursday but it's hard to say I think what we're gonna do here is the artillery onto this hill and get lined up here I uh, will need to take out their artillery. I think they just have the one artillery piece. Damn, I, I should have been paying better attention when I uh, started the battle. Uh, these Dragoons could be a little bit of a problem though, but um, our Light Cav is going to have some work to do over there, so we'll see. Should be faster than the Dragoons, but... The rest of the troops we're just gonna just gonna position them here for now uh, we're gonna deploy onto this under this hill I think this is the best spot on the field it's actually right in behind so I should quickly take a look at the rest of the battlefield but I think that's 
Yeah. I mean, deploying over here, not a great idea. This slope is going to negate our artillery fire. Could set the artillery up. Uh, yeah, I mean, really, the only... The, the, yeah, the best option is just to get over here and get deployed as quickly as possible. One of you lined up there. Nice line up there. Not sure what I'm going to do with these guys just yet. Oh, right. Where are the reinforcements coming in from? Almost forgot about these guys. I think I want to get you guys over to here for now. Yeah, the Dragoons are going to be the biggest problem getting to their artillery. However, the advantage are Chaucer's Cheval. Uh, the advantage are light cavalry as over these guys is the fact that they have guns. And we can. I mean, in melee, these guys will crush. Our light cavalry, but you can manage to stay out of melee with them. Then we have a chance to take them down. But the AI is having a tough time in their artillery deployed. If we can get our artillery deployed before them, potentially take it out. Or potentially take out their general too. Should actually maybe see that's an odd spot for them to uh, deploy the artillery. It looks like they've right. Let me get some shots on those dragoons because it looks like they might actually charge up this hill. Let's just stay there for now. I'm not sure what I'm gonna do with these guys. And actually, probably, I was gonna say we could probably deploy our, our infantry down the slope. Actually, let's get up here. Fuck. Fuck. They're not. Uh, Responding to the command. I think it's because I've got them so far to the edge of the map there. Fucking hell. Let's see if we can pick off their general. We're gonna lose our light cap here. Should probably pull them off the field, but I'm hoping that. Some help here. Oh. Yeah, we can maybe save them because we couldn't. Might need them for later on. Which means you can take position over here. Our men are running, sir. Yeah, fuck. Some shots in on them. Yeah, that was fucked. I, I couldn't get the uh, controls right there on the... Ah, uh... oh, shit. You guys need to get over here. Did not respond to the controls the way I normally do. I think it's because they were so close to the edge of the map when I... Yeah, anyway. Canon de six livres, parlez, attiré. Canon de six livres, parlez, attiré. Man, this is not looking great. Fuck sake. Our men are running, sir. I 
Get up here and help with the morale. Yeah, um, definitely not a... Definitely not going as planned here. Definitely not. No, let's just hope the canister shot will be able to save our ass here. Oh, here and Come on, get in there. Alright, you're gonna have to fucking do something here. You gotta. This guy's getting shot to pieces here in the back. Ah, shit. Not looking good at all. Oh, for fuck's sake, you need to get over here, man. You just get back on your artillery. Yeah, this is not exactly how you want to use your, uh, your generals, I'll tell you that. Uh, we're lucky we're not facing, we're only facing off against armed citizenry here for the most part. Otherwise, this could be a lot worse. Might lose one of our generals here, but I believe they just become wounded. All right, let's fall back to the hill here. Oh, what? No, don't shoot that direction. Shoot down there. Guys, get up here. Yeah, see, this is what I was talking about in the previous episode, how important it is to get your deployment right, and I don't think I did that here in this uh, particular battle. Looks like we're possibly gonna get a win here. What the fuck are you doing? Get out of there. Oh my gosh. These guys can take them. Oh man, I don't know if this is gonna go well. Let's charge here. Our men are coming! Fucking dragoons. Alright, we got them. Just this unit and the general's unit left. This was one sloppy, bloody battle right here. Holy shit. 
This is not a good start to the campaign. We want to get some momentum going. We wanted to try and get through this without taking too many casualties. And we've taken a ton of casualties here. Alright, let's just line up. See if we can pick these guys off from a distance. So we can avoid any more unnecessary loss of life. The general himself survived. Find him. Is that him there? Not sure which one is the general. I think it's one of those. Uh, yeah, that guy or that guy. I really hope he didn't get killed. I don't know. Oh, we can probably send these guys in and to finish them off. I would prefer the, uh, the cannon do the work here. Are they out of our range? Is that why? Should be in our range. Ah, uh, sh. Yeah. I think it's the way that we have them lined up that we can't quite target them there. And we can't because the horses already withdrew. We can't limber them up and. and move them. So unfortunately. We have to send these guys in. Alright, let's line two of you up over here and then see if we can get the other two on this side. Well, oh, actually, that might be a bad idea. It looks like the cannons. Mm. All around this side. Bring the generals over the support just in case. Line up right there. Hopefully we can shoot him down and then we can just go into melee to uh, deal with the cannon. We'll go around in behind. The general's bodyguard in reserve. Fuck. Near disaster. Look at this. Wow. This may actually set us back a bit. Got him. 
All right, well, whatever. Get in here and kill these cannons. Guys can pick up the pace too if you want. Great. I don't think you can steal opposing artillery in this, but I'm not 100% sure on that. fighting for you. Ooh, all right. Uh, heroic? Oh, shit, I meant to La save the, the replay there. Fuck me, 740 lost. Ooh. That is not good. Start things off. That is very, very bad. Anyway, hopefully it doesn't set us back too much. All right, so initially we're going to focus on a recruitment. I want to get more cavalry in the field because I do find them extremely useful, but very, as we saw there um, with my, my shoddy micro, um, very fragile as well if they get caught in the wrong situation. Monsieur, and we'll pick up some of these uh, militia. We just, oh, we're going to be desperate to get the numbers up now uh, because of the uh, fucking shitstorm that just happened there. Alright, the replenishment is not good either. Could merge these units, but I think... Um, I think we'll keep them for now. I'll just try and get their numbers replenished. Oui? And these guys and the general general staff actually survived. So that was pretty lucky. I mean, the generals very very fragile in uh, in this particular total war. Their bodyguards are small and they only they can only fight in melee. They don't have any kind of ranged bring support. So if this army comes over here, we could be kind of fucked. I don't know if we'll get actual garrison support or not. Monsieur. Hmm. So. Could also send Napoleon here next turn, but... Right, yeah, I don't think there's anything else here for us to do. Uh, public order in this, I, I don't think, so long as we don't sack any of the settlements, I don't think public order is really going to be too much of an issue. I think we'll be okay, and like I said, we'll do a little bit of building early on, but I want to focus on securing uh, most of this territory from Piedmont, Sardinia. I think it's important for us to get rid of this army before we move to this settlement. I would like to get the armies together. As a I wonder if actually they'll replenish more quickly down in this province. I bet they will. I feel like Napoleon should be able to take this force on on his own. And these guys are not going to offer much help anyway. I'm going to send a militia. We'll pick up militia unit here. I oui? just want to actually test it out, see if we get better replenishment. Yeah, we do. We do. Mm. Very interesting. 
Alright, I am going to... Just wondering if I should take the... Completed cavalry, probably shouldn't. We do have the Dragoons. Move you right to there. And I'm going to send the rest of these forces back to this province to get more replenishment. And try and get them back to full strength as quickly as possible after that previous disaster. And then we'll have of these cavalry to add to our ranks next turn as well. And then we'll continue recruiting our militia. Votre humble serviteur. Oh, son of a bitch. Another mistake I made last turn. I should have put Napoleon back into this army. Because we didn't get replenishment. Fuck me sideways. Lots of mistakes. Lots of mistakes here early on. Yep. Units without generals commanding them don't... Ah, oh, for fuck's sake. Why aren't these guys reinforcing us anyway the odds are still in our favor so I guess we'll just fight it but I, I was really hoping to get those reinforcements I was really counting on those reinforcements oh well yeah this is definitely not how I envisioned this uh this campaign starting off. Oh, for fuck's sake, fighting in the rain, too. I think we're gonna deploy on this side. It's a nice open plain. We don't really have high ground, but forcing them to come across this plain. Should work to our advantage. Damn this weather, sir! Wet powder makes misfires a certainty. Yeah, I don't know. Sorry, guys. I'm just trying to trying to figure where the best spot to deploy is here. If we deploy over here. All of this crap is going to shield them from our, uh, our shots. Fuck. Goons. Hmm. we deploy over here. Yeah, I'm not crazy about the ground. I think probably back here is the best spot. Just like decent line of fire here. That's what we're going to do. Plus, we've got this ridge that can kind of protect our, our right flank. actually deploy against this thing too. That's interesting against this fence. Oh it's uh, a wall. Gotcha. Oh Alright so let's let's do that. We 
not. Uh... Okay, there we go. Down. Oh, watch you on. Yep. <laughs> watch you on the other side. I'm not sure exactly how this. Oh my gosh. I'm not sure how this is supposed to work. Maybe because these guys are on this side, we can't deploy. Oh god. Now I've put them on. That is one thing about the uh, newer Total Wars is uh, the controls. I'm just such a great job with the control. Fuck me. Oh, there we go. I don't know how this works. There we go. Can we get some more of these guys on here? No, I want them on the other side. Ah, oh, there we go. Les fils de la révolution sont impatients de se couvrir de gloire. I'm not sure exactly how this works, but there we go. Line guys up like so. All right, that should pretty good. General back here. Ooh, sorry guys. A while to get deployed there. Just out of our range. We get some shots off here. We get some errant hits. Really looking forward to. Uh, to using some heavier artillery. The six pounders just don't have crazy range. Um, I, I think the the highest. What have they got for guns there? Uh, they've got six pounders as well. I love how the cannonballs will skip off of the uh, the ground occasionally as well. Fucking fantastic. Yeah, I think in this particular campaign, the the largest guns that we'll be able to get is um, the eight pounders. Our enemies, I think, will occasionally have. Oh, that was a nice fucking beauty. I'm shooting at them. We can take them down. We can bring the dragoon, dra our dragoons out to hit their uh, their artillery. It's really it, it is kind of tricky to hit artillery with artillery sometimes. Fuck! I was gonna leave a. I meant to leave some infantry in the corner there. Anyway, I had to protect the flank. Looks like they're coming around this way. Anyway, so. Perfectly okay with that. I'm gonna get demolished coming in here. Try some. Ah, uh, shit. More range with the, uh, the regular shot. There we go. All right, perfect. All right, start shooting. Start shooting at them. Ooh, fuck. Uh, Napoleon, you come over here. Before you get yourself shot by cannon fire. Let's get our dragoons moving. Take this out, and ooh, yeah. General's over here, too. That's too bad we took so much damage on them last battle, otherwise they'd be uh, a lot more useful. It doesn't look like they're going to try and assault this wall. It's like they're just going to come into our little kill zone here, which is fine. They funnel themselves in here. We should be able to uh, shoot them to pieces. As long as they don't focus on the Dragoons, we're good should be able to cut through them and they should be able to cut through them as well. Okay. 
hate how default is to walk. And I haven't quite gotten down, if you double click where you're pointing them to, to move, they will run, but I haven't quite gotten the double click down. I Sometimes it, I get it right and sometimes I don't. This guy's going to try and defend the artillery or are they going to run off? Glorious victories, huh? It's soon to be yours. Oh, you can actually you can dismount these guys as well. Yeah, so we're taking some casualties on our dragoons, but they're they should get the job done here. Anyway, let's take a look at what we've got going on here. We should probably switch this to canister shot. And let's see. Let's see if we throw these grenades into these guys. This might not be a great idea. Maybe should have just kept firing. Let's see how this goes. I'm just hoping that the grenades will actually break them. They're inferior numbers. Ooh, that was nice. Alright, charge it now. Okay, this. Uh, let's hold your fire. And let's charge you guys in here too. Help the grenadiers out. Yeah, grenadiers are taking a beating. Oh my gosh, are we losing over here? What the fuck? My goodness. I guess it was more of an even fight than I surmised. 11, 6. Didn't get a charge in. Thinking a lot of these units will send back to get replenishment in the, uh, in the starting province there. Fuck me, the Grenadiers took general, a beating. Sir. Now they must oh. break. Alright. Well, only he gets the job done. Oh my gosh, what is wrong with this? Well, let me backspace. There we go. Fuck me sideways. Come on. Wow. Alright, fuck, whatever. I need to save every fucking replay anyway. Alright, so that was a much cleaner victory. Still lost some key units though. Alright, move. Well. We'll just stay put here for now. Monsieur. And get replenishment, so. Alright, looks good. Hmm. Really would like to build. The market. Oh, we kind of need the troops right now. I think the next target is Alessandra, and then we'll head for Turin after that. Hopefully, we'll be back 
in decent shape by that time. You can always build here. You can always build here the uh, the market next turn anyway. Now oh, we've got to build it here too anyway. I think I'm going to wait to build these markets until we've taken their capital and then we should have a little bit of a reprieve once the uh, the capital is taking, taken. Move Napoleon to there. Send some support. What kind of movement do you have? Hmm. Oh shit. I guess it's too late now anyway. Alright. You're gonna come up with Napoleon as well. I wanna get those cannon that cannon transferred over to Napoleon's army as well. Shooting these. Hmm. Just wondering if we should get some more quality troops. I'm just gonna leave him sitting here for now. He'll be able to help when we go to turn, but I want these forces back to full strength again. For the cavalry here though. But you guys should be able to make it. Ah damn it. Would have really liked to have them for that next battle. Yeah, I was just thinking if we should just recruit some quality from down here. Oops. But I think we'll just go with another cavalry. They are somewhat fragile. And more than likely, these guys aren't going to last too long, but we do need them. Yeah, I think unfortunately that's all we're gonna do for this turn. Income next turn is pretty slim. I was old. I think I'm actually gonna disband this unit. It'll save us a little bit of coin. Uh, it's replenishing really slow and to be honest, I don't use these uh, this type of um, infantry very often. I forget how to fucking disband them though. Um, ah, there we go. All right, figured it out. These poor dragoons are replenishing so slow. We should have sent them back around. Oui, monsieur. Get to there and start replenishing again. Prêt à recevoir vos ordres? Prêt. Votre humble serviteur. Anyway. Tenez-vous prêt? Formez une ligne de bataille. Oui. Commencez le siège! Les porcs pourrissent dans leur porcherie! Oui, monsieur! Marchez! Might as well just consolidate Cible our troops. Siéger, that way we can um, deploy it right away. Prêt à recevoir vos ordres? Yeah, it's just really unfortunate. These guys. Uh, I mean, they might. In the battle, wondering if actually we we had brought them the other way, if they would have actually been able to make it. If we had brought them through this area instead, uh, probably not. I don't know. It's hard to say. I mean, going by the road, they might have, but I, you have to go through turn. So, 
They might be reinforcing here for Lucky, but I don't think so. I think if they were able to get to this thing. Yeah, unfortunate. Oh well. Uh, we're not up against anything too strong here. They do have 12 pound foot artillery. Uh, it's too bad we can't capture their foot artillery. That would be fantastic. Battle of Alessandria. Yeah, this is uh, some juicy high ground right here. I think what we'll do is we'll get our cannons. over here I will deploy the cannons right around there and then we'll just wrap the rest of the troops around this hill ah, the dragoons trying to keep you guys out of the fighting who else is pretty damaged it's too revolutionary infantry we'll try it we'll keep you guys in reserve like for most of the enemy fire to be dealt with by them or soaked up by them so you can stand here why is there, his general staff doesn't have his picture out of dragoons yeah I guess we'll deploy them over here too put them in behind for now right, we're gonna need them again to take out their artillery but be a little bit dangerous. Can you guys stay in behind? Faster though, into position. Mm. Well, I guess you can't. Right. Uh oh, doesn't sound good. Does not sound good at all. Mm. Already shooting at us. Where are the dragoons? You guys need to uh, get to work. It's like they're backing off and they're leaving their artillery. Alright, so those are the deployables. You run into a fence like that with your cavalry and it chews up your cavalry real fast. So they're gonna outrange our guns as well. Limbered. I'm not sure if we're going to be able to reach their cannon. It's really bizarre that they all backed off from the artillery. And left it undefended there. Though, they'll be able to get in to protect them pretty quickly. Which more than likely is what they're going to do. We might end up losing our dragoons here, but it'll be worth it to take down this this artillery. Attack! 
been activated yet. Hoping for a quick hit and run. We'll come out back around this way. Come on. Go, 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 go. Yeah, this guy's just happy to watch their comrades die here. Well, that was fucking great. I guess it's gonna just sit there. Alright, marching forward. Good, good, good. right there. Oh man, this terrain. Hard to deploy on. These guys deployed here like this in case they come around. Actually, not totally not totally confident that we'll be able to hold the line back here with the, the militia that sends one of you should be able to shoot over one another what the fuck are you guys doing right, you guys just stay right there well if they all funnel through here and attack us on the fortification here we should be good The men are fatigued, sir, and must rest a while. Who the hell is fatigued? We haven't done anything yet. Must be the dragoons. We must so I said, yeah. We yeah. must shoot. Yeah. Yeah. You guys just shoot at these troopers. Getting a ton of kills. A couple though. The fact that we have the high ground should make a big difference as well. That was a nice shot. I only got two of them though. So you guys shooting at this blob, this is a nice target, a nice juicy target right here. And the artillery can be shooting at these guys. That's a good one. Try and wear them down as much as possible before they get up here. Uh, this unit on its own should not be able to get past this fortification here. I don't think there's any way they're going to be able to uh, dislodge us from this hill here. Especially after they 
very graciously let us take out their artillery. Yeah, once they start coming up the hill though, it's going to be tough for us to get artillery shots on them without, uh, without hitting our own troops. Here mostly armed citizenry, line infantry, militia, armed citizenry. Should be shooting this uh, line infantry. Should be focusing on. Yeah, it's going to be tough to hit them. If we charge down this hill, it might break them as well. Shots into them first. Maybe charge down. Ah, uh, see, this is what I'm talking about. Guys, just focus your fire on that unit. Because we're gonna get a ton of friendly fire here. Almost in range. Get your bayonets out. Lots of uh, friendly fire here. Yeah, I just wasn't happy with the deployment there. Glorious victories, huh? Just figured soon to be yours. charge down the hill should smash their morale. Allow us to, uh, to break this army. Is the last one to break over here. Try this again. Yeah, I don't know why it doesn't, uh, whenever I try and backspace, it doesn't work. There we go, it worked that time. Fuck. I don't know. I had such a hard time the previous couple battles. Anyway, whatever. Fier et victorieux. Préparez-vous pour la bataille. And we will peacefully occupy. One more of these guys. So. All right. Yeah. Can handle it. Votre humble serviteur. Monsieur, vos 
All right, yeah, looks good. I think we'll go for our turn next turn. I think we should be. I mean, we're not gonna be full strength, obviously, but I think we'll be strong enough. These units will be. Ah. Yeah, I mean, we gotta push for it anyway, regardless of whether or not we're at full strength. Just wondering if we should maybe merge some of these and recruit some more. Oh, we can't afford them anyway. Alright, so I think I am going to uh, leave things here for now. And we're going to try and take turn next turn. Or next episode, rather. What's the situation the army, the shape they're in? Not great shape, but we've got these more elite units relatively well replenished. Or replenished. So, got a couple militia there. And we've got these cavalry. These ca cavalry are going to be extremely important in this battle, so it uh, should give us the flexibility we need to take them on. Let's actually set it up. Actually, we don't need to. I'm just kind of curious to see what they have in there. I'm pretty sure their main army is going to be in there. This is their capital. Usually, I mean, the other option would be to come up here and take this settlement. Oh, I, you know what? Maybe I might do that. Then we can swing back down. Hit turn. Yeah, I'm not sure. Anyway, we got to pick up the pace anyway because... Uh, Going a little bit slowish. I mean, it's not. Bleh. I don't know. I feel like we could have gotten off to a better start. Anyway, I'm going to read a little bit more from Alan Schoen's book here, and then I'll, I'll see you guys next time in uh, episode three. The background of these future marshals, most of them from working class families, was as varied as it was frequently startling. Messina was born in Nizza, Nice. In 1758, the small, dark, slender boy came from a long line of grocers. If until the age of six, life appeared to offer this young subject of the King of Sardinia some stability and modest prospects, all was much changed with his father's premature death. His mother remarried quickly and soon abandoned Andre, leaving him with one of his uncles. For the next few years, the boy worked in the uncle's pasta shop, preparing and cutting spaghetti. As for school, for the working classes, there was none. Approaching his 10th birthday, Andre fled over the bar and into France, where a relative found him in a, him a position for the next seven, several years as a cabin boy and then a sailor on long sea voyages. By the age of 17, however, he never wanted to see another ship as long as he lived. Unusually small and wary, he was as fully grown as he would ever be. The future did not seem bright. Still illiterate, he had little to offer of the world. Uh, offer, he had little to offer the world. The Royal Italian Regiment of the French Army did accept him, however, and in its ranks he spent the next 14 years. Quite intelligent, he finally learned how to read and write, and ultimately reached the rank of Sergeant Major in 1789, when he was automatically required to retire. The coming of the revolution was to prove his salvation. He was elect elected an officer of the National Guard and then advanced to a battalion of volunteers in 1791. By 1794, Messina found himself a major general in the French army. He may not have had either education or good manners as Captain Thibault, just as uh, just assigned to his regiment in Nice in 1796, remarked, but his face reflected much wisdom and energy, while he had the penetrating eyes of an eagle. He was respected by his officers and men alike, who had real confidence in him. He bore himself in a, in a most dignified manner and proved to be provokingly audacious. His gestures, his gestures were imperative and his speech brief and to the point. His relations with an equally dapper Italian-speaking Bonaparte would not always be easy given both men's proud, strong, independent nature. 
If Messina's youth seemed uninspiring, it had been a veritable bed of roses compared with that of Aguero. Born in Paris in 1757, the son of a household servant, the boy spent his childhood in the streets of the capital without any parental interest or supervision, and with the inevitable results, recruited into the army at the age of 17. The tall, scarcely literate, rough Aguero did not survive even in the barracks, being dishonorably discharged for a serious but hushed up offense. Undiscouraged, the cold Aguero, the brigand, his own troops would later call him, joined a private regiment of Car Carabine Carabineers. Instead of being grateful for a fresh start, however, Aguero deserted in Switzerland. By now, no one wanted the roughneck except the aging King Frederick of Prussia, on condition that he remain a private. After a few more years, Aguero de deserted again, or was he cashiered. Ever the optimist, the swashbuckling rogue decided to exchange dreary grey Prussian skies for the azure waters of Italy. Serving for a while as a sergeant in the army of the king of, two, of the two Sicilies at Naples, for once ending his career honorably, he next established himself as a fencing master, at which he did well enough to marry the daughter of a Greek merchant. But when the French Revolution broke out in 1789, Aguero, regrettably a member of the barbarous French who had arrested the French royal family, was ordered to quit the kingdom forthwith, returning eventually to France. He joined the Paris National Guard, transferring to a volunteer regiment two years later, and by the end of the next year, the ex-sergeant suddenly found himself elected a major general, only in France. After campaigning in the western Pyrenees, for two years, he now found himself in Nice, facing a little Corsican general, a full head shorter than himself and equally arrogant. They disliked each other on sight. Right, guys, I'm going to leave it there. We'll get uh, into more of uh, his general staff and these uh, these men who will be future, the future marshals of his empire in the next episode. Thank you very much for watching once again. I will see you next time. Ragnarok. Signing out.